today I'm in my food storage room and I want to clean it out, reorganize it, and restock what I have down here that needs to go up on the shelf. I'm getting the help today from these worksheets. Some of them are from the foodstorageorganizer.com. I love Valerie, great source to go to. So let me share with you what these sheets look like in detail. She has categories already labeled. So she has categories for sugar, snacks, condiments, stuff for your baby, pets, vegetables, oils, fats, fruits. I double printed it. So on the other side, there's beverages, grains, pastas, beans, meats, soups, and then you can just count and put what you have down here. If you just want to do your own and what and cater it to completely to you, you can um, print this one out as well. These will help you in your normal pantry if you don't have something like this to help keep track, see what you have, especially if you want to keep two weeks of meals on your shelves ready to go, especially with all the shortages that are happening all around the world. I think we all are feeling this. We're going to jump into this. I'm going to count what I have, restock and organize and clean up things. Are you ready? Aprons on. Let's go. What? Costco's jipping us on toilet paper. Yeah, it's less, huh? It's less. A package that we bought months ago, 30 rolls, 425 sheets. 30 rolls, 380. And the cost has gone up. check your packaging. I actually just did a video on inflation at Costco with prices rising, what they look like now. I didn't have toilet paper or paper towels like I wanted to because I couldn't find in my receipts. <laughs> that was a long project. I couldn't find what the prices were before, but that was shocking. That was shocking. So if you want to see that video, the prices will surprise you. Link is below or I in the sky. I like to zone all my shelves in like categories as well so it's easy to find. So right here I keep all the excess cereal and so I'm going to keep track of this and I did buy more cereal so we'll stock them up here as well. And when I rotate things I bring the expiration date that needs to get used sooner up front. Eight boxes of cereal. Then I have crackers up here. So what I'm gonna do is since this box is open and we have three packages of saltines left, these will go in the pan other pantry, the everyday pantry. So now I'm gonna write on my list of what we need saltine crackers. Some more crackers to restock. So I have the Ritz. We've got Townhouse. We have these rice crackers that need to get used up. I'm moving this to the short-term pantry. And my almond flour crackers, moving them to the short-term pantry. Okay, I'm working with my ramen I already have on the shelf. So I have a second big box. So I'm just going to, since there's room here in between the cereal and the crackers, I'm just going to put that there. All right. So this section here is like broths. So I keep my ramen here and then we have chicken broths, veggie broths, beef broth, all right in this section. So I am going to organize it and I think I might have more to add on the shelf. We'll see. And then, um, bring what needs to be used up closer first and all that fun jazz. I just pulled down a box of chicken broth that needs, they're all in quarts. Um, I need to use that box first and I did replenish it when the last, one of the last times I was at Costco. So this one goes until December and we'll use that before December. So this is going to get pushed to the back and this one we need to use in the next little while, which we will. So this will go here. Boom. There we go. 
What I'm doing right now is marking the chicken stock, but I want to make a clear distinction between the um, quartz boxes versus the cans. I have two cans left of the chicken stock from that box. I'm gonna get rid of this. These are great to hold on to if you are buying things on sale. Just don't start hoarding them, but I always like to keep a few on hand, so that way if I get a few, I have boxes that I can stack with. So I get rid of a lot, but I hold on to some. These cans here that have an expiration date, okay, saw that. And I'm gonna replace it with these that I bought and we stored them in my daughter's closet, but now I have room to transfer these over here. These I wanna use up before these. So, even though I've had these on my shelf longer, the expiration date on this one is a month earlier. So, I'm going to pause on these, move to these. <laughs> Do you see how important it is to know? Even though they go longer than that expiration date that's on them, but I always use the newest, the closest expiration date. These cans that were left need to be used first these two cans so um huh I need room I need room I don't know maybe I'll put them right here because those have to get used first I mean I could lay them no they're going right here okay and more than likely I'll use them this week so not a problem chicken broth done now I just need to count how many I have so open this one up so we use this one first I have 24 cans here. This is 24, but I used, look like three, someone opened it. So, all right, got the number. Let's put it on the chart. Above those, I put the two quarts that I bought on sale a few weeks ago, just back there because they have a much further expiration date. So we'll go through um, the boxes if I need quarts in that order. Now I'm on to the beef broths. And Derek That's the best if buy. That's the best if buy. Okay, we have another crate of beef broths in another closet. So, I have three cans that are May of this year. So, these need to get used up first. You're seeing the, the process here. So, of course, they can go longer than what they say. But um, we have a lot of recipes that we use all the broths with quickly. So I definitely want that September one before this October one. So what we'll do is put the September one on top of here. And then these quart broths. The date is April 23. So these will go in the far back of my shelf because I don't need to think about them for a while. <sighs> okay. So everyone knows the system in this food storage room. You grab from the top, not from the bottom. Now, doesn't mean that I won't grab any chicken broths or beef broths during the case lot sale. Not necessarily. I am working with a lot and we have one more chicken broth in the closet, the other closet. But if the expiration date for them is far out, like 2024, I will grab one. One chicken broth and one beef broth, if, if it's that far out. Here are our tomato soups. This is has an expiration date of the month of December of the same year that these cans are and this is april so what i'm gonna do is open this one up i could keep it here forward i don't think i have any more tomato soup in the other closet no i don't okay so this one needs to get used before this one that is correct so this needs to get opened and pulled to the front So now I gotta count these. 
because they're not all 24 because some of them have been used. Okay, I got the number of cans and I'm gonna mark it on my list. I don't know if you could see that, but way back here I have a box of cream or mushroom soup. So this is October of this year and I have another cream and mushroom soup in the closet. We're gonna see what the date is on that. All right, here is cream and mushroom. These are good until uh, April of 23. That's the best by date. My other box of cream and mushroom soup needs to be used up first. So I'm gonna put this here. Yeah. I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way. Unless, Oh, of course not. Of course not. Nope, can't do that either. Nope, nope. All right, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna figure this out. Okay, I'm gonna change some things up. I have the start of the tomatoes here, and then they go to here. I am gonna bring those tomatoes down underneath these tomatoes, and then we're gonna go into the sauces, and then the pasta. So I'm gonna move the, some of the vegetables that start right here, and put them up here. So I'm going to restructure some things, and I do this ever so often, but I think I'm gonna rotate some stuff and make the system a little flow a little more smoothly. So I'm just playing, I'm just playing with canned goods. That's what I do. Oh my goodness, I am thinking I have space right here near those tomatoes. I might move this tomato sauce down here as well. That way I have more room for soups because this is the soup area and now I don't have any more room for soups. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna move this down here. Okay, now I'm on the pasta shelf. I have pasta in this bucket, boxes of pasta here, and another big box of pasta, mostly I think penne pasta in my daughter's closet. All the pasta that we have was brought in here. The big box of penne. The big box of penne was brought in. And then all the new bags that I just bought. So now I'm gonna calculate all this up, see what I have and what I'm putting on the shelves. And if any of, if this box needs to go back into the bedroom closet, that's fine. As long as I have it inventoried, I'm gonna be good.
put all the bow ties, some small shell, medium shell, ditalini, egg noodle, and fettuccine and spaghetti in here. And I think I'm not gonna put anything else to leave room right here for more spaghetti. Because we'll go through more of that than the rest of these. Okay, I figured out the pasta situation, which I'll show you in a minute. And then more pasta and the sauces. And there's room for more Alfredo's and tomato sauces, uh, pasta sauces here. I can and do make my own pasta sauce here. Absolutely. But for the kids, when they're doing their own thing, it's good that we have that on hand. I moved the ketchup over to the tomato section because I also cook with ketchup. So I, I moved that over. Now I am working on this whole section, which is tuna, canned chickens, and meat, and clams, and beans, and box items. I'm working with all of this right now. Where I'm making more of a mess in the process, but it's getting somewhere. 
So this section is done. I'm pretty sure this is what we are going with. So we have some room up here for more beverages, um, milk, like I have my protein drink, macadamia milk, if we get our more of our almond milk in, that will go there. Yes, that's beer. <laughs> I know some of you are probably thinking she doesn't drink beer. Nope, that is for beef stew and some of our recipes that call for beer. Now I am working on this section. We're not going to touch that, but this is going to get an overhaul and redo. So this is condiments, jellies, peanut butter, cakes, muffin mixes, desserts like pie filling, jello like although kind of the like extra baking stuff so we have jelly and pickles and mayo and miracle whip and then down below is you've got your cleaning stuff so i am going to attack this now i'm driving you're smiling just really doing nothing that's the thing i like about you It's our way, Route 66, and we keep on driving. We just do what we want to do. Yeah, no, nothing's complicated. Now I'm in the section with all our paper goods, except for the paper towels and the toilet paper that are kept in the corner. So the toilet paper, paper towels, and Kleenex are on the buckets of the long term of food storage. They're just easier because they're so bulky to just keep over here in the corner. Okay, I did um, have Derek go grab us some more plastic forks and paper plates and paper bowls because we were out so now I'm just gonna get everything on here and sort it out okay it is done we have the paper plates refilled some more plastic forks 
and this is what is left of the spoons from the uh, big box just like this but once it starts shrinking down I put them in these shoe boxes and cups and paper bowls and then all our Ziploc bags and a few brown bags just on the side there in case we need them and uh, yeah looking good well it is done and it feels so good to have things restocked reorganized and dates moved forward this is great I'm liking the new setup that I did changing the shelves um, I can get to my condiments easier because they were hiding like in the back corner so I'm liking that this is easier to access and oh my goodness yes this feels so good I did utilize buckets down below this one has all the dry beans and lentils and split peas and then I have some cornstarch and baking soda and some spices here this is like all that we have of like box food like besides the taco shells and the stuffing is these nor pasta sides I got those at the last case lot sale and it's been nice just for a quick side but um yeah I won't be buying those again but they're nice to have so down here in this bucket is spaghetti I need to buy more spaghetti and then this one is all penny and that one's all the bow ties and elbows and stuff um, I do know what I need and what I don't need this is great it is late it is you're not even gonna believe me when I tell you what time it is right now it is almost 1 30 in the morning I have been working at this all day Derek and Boston they have helped you know carry some things in and pull some things out for me a lot of cardboard went to the recycling bin it's been crazy so it's looking good I did mark what we have here all of this is accounted for right here I am going to pause this for you there's going to be a part two of these sheets because I need to go through all my long-term food storage which is all these freeze-dried cans I have more in my daughter's closet I have more under the stairs which I have shared with you before on videos I have a lot more then I'm gonna go through what I have in my freezers and I'm gonna take you along on a freezer video so stay tuned if you're interested to count what you have in your pantry or your long-term food storage I suggest you do it's good to see where you're at this was so good because I'm able to see what I really do need to get more of right now and I definitely challenge you to do this periodically maybe every six months because when I head out to that case lot sale in a few weeks I already know what I'm not gonna get because every time I go it's like clockwork okay we need kidney beans pinto beans black beans green beans corn um, I just have the go-to things I always get but I'm not gonna need to do that this time because I realize I'm like okay we're good on some things we can wait I am so glad I got this done today so click down below if you want to learn how you can create a three to six month food storage also down below you can learn how to stockpile create a food storage on five dollars a week there is so much down below for you guys learning what to get each month uh, in your food storage I created a whole series that playlist is down below lots of great information I would love to know what are you working on right now for your stockpile your food storage I know everyone in the world is feeling the shortages we're feeling the pinch and I want to know what are you working on all right, friends, thank you so much for joining me, and we will see you soon. Bye.